It's less than an hour, an hour. It's less than an hour to oot o'clock. So we're gonna reduce Ron Book Foov The Rude to Ooze. I don't know why I'm pronouncing all my vowels as ooze, but it's fun. We're on book five of the Road to Oz. We're on chapter 16 tonight. It's called Visiting the Pumpkin Field. Ilyana, my munchkin, will you close that door behind me so that I have light to read by? That would be wunderbar. And Ilyana, the munchkin, is a beautiful munchkin standing right here. Yes. And there's another munchkin over here. And there's another munchkin over there on the couch, but you can't see her because she's on the couch. There I'm she is. Have my birthday. She looked like she fell down. He's almost going to have a birthday. Yes, he is. His birthday is two weeks from today. Two weeks from today. So we'll be in the middle of book six by then. Book six is called The Emerald City of Oz. We'll be in the middle of that by his birthday because there's only like eight more chapters of this and his birthday is in 14 days. So let's read chapter 16 of The Road to Oz. It's called Visiting the Pumpkin Field. Dorothy let Button Bright wind up the clockwork in the Copper Man this morning, his thinking machine first, then his speech, and finally his action. So he would doubtless run perfectly until they had reached the Emerald City. The Copper Man and the Tin Man were good friends, and not so much alike as you might think. For one was alive, and the other was moved by means of machinery. One was tall and angular, the other short and round. You could love the Tin Woodman because he had a fine nature, kindly and simple. The machine man you could only admire without loving, since to love such a thing was as he was impossible, was as impossible as to love a sewing machine or an automobile. I don't know, I love my car. Yet TikTok was popular with the people of Oz because he was so trustworthy, reliable, and true. He was sure to do exactly what he was wound up to do at all times and in all circumstances. Perhaps it is better to be a machine that does its duty than a flesh and blood person who will not, for a dead truth is better than a live falsehood. About noon, the travelers reached a large field of pumpkins, a vegetable quite appropriate to the yellow country of the Winkies, and some of the pumpkins which grew there were of remarkable size. Just before they entered upon the field, they saw three little mounds that looked like graves, with a pretty headstone next to each of them. "'What's this?' asked Dorothy in wonders. "'It's Jack Pumpkinhead's private graveyard,' replied the Tin Woodman. "'But I thought nobody ever died in Oz,' she said." "'Nor do they, although if one is bad, he may be condemned and killed by the good citizens,' he answered. Dorothy ran over to the little graves and read the words engraved upon the tombstones. The first one said, "'Here lies the mortal part of Jack Pumpkinhead, which spoiled April 9th. She then went to the next stone, which said, "'Here lies the mortal part of Jack Pumpkinhead, which spoiled October 2nd. On the third stone were carved three words, were carved these words, here lies the mortal part of Jack Pumpkinhead, which spoiled January 24th. Poor Jack, sighed Dorothy. I'm sorry he had to die in three parts, for I had hoped to see him again. <coughs> so you shall, declared the Tin Woodman, since he is still alive. Come with me to his house, for Jack is now a farmer and lives in this very pumpkin field. They walked over to a monstrous big hollow pumpkin, which had a door and windows cut through the rind. There was a stovepipe running through the stem, and six steps had been built leading up to the front door. They walk, uh, walked up to this door and looked in. Seated on a bench was a man clothed in a spotted shirt, a red vest, and faded blue trousers, whose body was merely sticks of wood jointed clumsily together. On his neck was set a round yellow pumpkin, with a face carved on it such as a boy often car carves on a jack-o'-lantern. This queer man was engaged in snapping in slippery was engaged in snapping slippery pumpkin seeds with his wooden fingers, trying to hit a target on the other side of the room with them. He did not know he had visitors until Dorothy exclaimed, Why, it's Jack Pumpkinhead himself! He turned and saw them and at once came forward to greet the little Kansas girl and Nick Chopper and to be introduced to their new friends. Button Bright was at first rather shy with the quaint pumpkin head, but Jack's face was so jolly and smiling, being carved that way, that the boy soon grew to like him. I thought a while ago that you were buried in three parts, said Dorothy, but now I see you're just the same as ever. Uh, not quite the same, my dear, 
for my mouth is a little more one-sided than it used to be, and pretty nearly the same. I've, I've a new head, and this is the fourth one I've owned since Ozma first made me and brought me to life by sprinkling me with the magic powder. Well, what became of the other heads, Jack? They spoiled and I buried them, for they were not fit for, pi for pies. Each time Ozma has carved me a new head just like the old one, and as my body is by far the largest part of me, I am still Jack Pumpkinhead, no matter how often I change my upper end. Once we had a dreadful time to find another pumpkin, as they were out of season, and I was obliged to wear my old head a little longer than was strictly healthy. But after this old sad experience, I resolved to raise pumpkins myself, so as never to be caught again without one handy. And now I have this big fine field that you see before you. Some grow pretty big, too big to be useful heads, so I dug this one out and used it for a house. Isn't it damp? asked Dorothy. Not very. There isn't much left but the shell, you see, and it will last a long time yet. I think you are brighter than you used to be, Jack, said the Tin Woodman. Your last head was quite a stupid one. The seeds in this one are better, was the reply. Are you going to Ozma's party? asked Dorothy. Yes, said he. I wouldn't miss it for anything. Ozma's my parent, you know, because she built my body and covered my pumpkin head. I'll follow you to the Emerald City tomorrow, where we, sh where we shall meet again. I can't go today because I have to plant fresh pumpkin seeds and water the young vines. But give my love to Ozma and tell her I'll be there just in time for the jubilation. Oh, we will, she promised. And then they all left and resumed their journey. And that is the end of chapter 16. The, what was it? What was it called? Visiting the Pumpkin Field. And that was cool. We got to see Jack Pumpkin. And we haven't heard from Jack Pumpkin in a few books. I almost forgot what his voice sounded like. So thank you for joining me. We'll see you again tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, Facebook Live. More Road to Oz. It just keeps getting better. See you then. Good night.